here we are. Package secure. Bib number 463. Oh, now you guys got my address. Oh boy. Start time, 10 a.m. Let's go. Hey guys, what's up? This is Brock Eves, Life on the Wild Side, Boston series, final chapter, guys. Um, I'm gonna kind of try to share my thoughts the best I can about the Boston Marathon and the weeks leading up to it, and then my thoughts moving forward. Um, I'm gonna try going in fairly chronological order here, but we'll see how that goes. Um, to just kind of start things off with, uh, my peak week of training was about three weeks before the Boston Marathon. Um, I had a phenomenal peak week of training. Um, did a big 11 mile tempo that went really well right out of right out of the car after traveling for two days or three days. And then um, later that week, I did a uh, three by 5k uh, workout, which uh, is uh, I'll post above here. Um, and then from there, that's where things got pretty ugly for me. Um, I was really excited to be back home for a week after a couple months of work, um, 80, 90 hour weeks and things of that sort. So I was getting pretty worn out between the running, working and just trying to survive grind. And, uh, long story short, I got home and things just got worse for me. Um, it was like, boom, you finally stopped moving for a few days and everything just slammed me. Um, I tried doing my, like race simulation long run as far as fueling and stuff like that got nine miles out on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere and just totally my body was like man you're done walked back in the wind rain and snow and it was just not a great experience and things never improved from that moment on before the race and that was about two and a half weeks before the race um Went to Norfolk, Virginia for uh, work, and the runs were just death marches if I even survived or ran at all. Um, I think that I just kind of burned out a little bit, not so much because I was running too much, but just the constant grind of work and running and travel eventually just caught up with me, which is really unfortunate um, because going into a marathon with just a totally beat body and mind is not necessarily a place you want to be but i wasn't about to let an opportunity to go um so just to kind of break it down i finished that job a couple days before the boston marathon and then drove did a little camping on my way up to boston and uh, upstate new york which was actually pretty cool and then um new hampshire a little bit and then uh went to boston saturday morning picked up my packet and that's when I realized how big this marathon was going to be. I go to the expo to pick up my packet, trying to drive downtown with my truck and camper, which was quite an experience in itself. Um, that's besides the point. But picking up my packet was like leaving a ballpark stadium, like baseball, basketball, football. Just the mass of people moving through the building all at one time was unreal. And I was thinking, you know, Saturday morning, you know, there's going to be a whole lot going on as far as people picking up their packets. But I can't imagine that that was like that for three days straight, which is crazy. So I get my packet and stuff. And then my parents, uh, I was really fortunate that my parents were able to come to watch me race. And uh, I hung out with them at the campground for the days leading up. Picked up my buddy Jack slash coach at the airport Sunday. And, uh kind of game plan came up with a plan for the marathon um my body was still really off i wasn't nervous but i got puked the night before which is not a common thing for me i just just was not there and like um jack and i drove to right by the starting line we were able to camp in my truck right by the starting line which was really cool not a whole lot going on there but like i was talking to him before the race and it was just like it was weird i just for once in my life, I didn't want to race, and it wasn't because I didn't put in the work or wasn't prepared. It was just my body was off, and it was just a really uncomforting feeling. But you know me, I got to get her done. So that's the, the thoughts leading up to the race. Uh, I wake up Monday morning, Boston Monday, um, and I... There's a shuttle bus right to the starting line, like a seven minute drive from the starting where I camped to the starting line and uh, hopped on that bus and went to Athlete Village. Now, Athlete Village was, 
I think it would have been more enjoyable if I had knew more people or was with some people I knew, but it was just a couple hours of standing around in the misty rain, thinking about how I'm about to run a marathon that uh, I wasn't feeling great about. And um, I, need, I one thing I would have definitely done next time is bring a trash bag or a little tarp to sit on because the grass was wet and stuff. So that was kind of just a word of advice if you are to ever run Boston. Uh, definitely bring something dry to sit on. Um, long story short, get to the starting line. I'm in corral one, um, wave one. Get to see the pro start, so that was kind of cool. And then uh, I'm gonna kind of give you the the race and how how it actually went, despite everything going on in my life. Um, when it's time to game game time, I, I usually step it up and let adrenaline take over. So I mean, I I let it do it do its things the best it could. So start the race get out i got out pretty quick but i mean it's all downhill at the start for the most part and my first few miles i think my first 5k average was like uh, 525 a mile or something like that and stayed right around that pace for a good portion of the race or good portion of the first half of the race um this being said i know that seems really fast i went through half in 71 and it's really not that far off of like my goal time and a realistic time, but with the legs being tired before I even got into the race, this proved to be uh, pretty hot for me. But regardless of how fast or slow I got out, out, the second half was the body was already worn out and it was gonna feel it. Got to the second half, especially around like mile 16, the wheels definitely started to come off. And from there on, I just, I kind of lost the pack I was with and I just bit the bullet. I just suffered for as long as I could until the finish line. I have never hurt that bad for that long in my life. Like, it's not an understatement. Like, I definitely kind of found who I was out there. It was every part of my body was like, dude, just stop, just stop. Like, it's okay to just stop. But I just, just kept rolling along. It felt like I was running 10, 12, 10 minute miles. I mean, I wasn't. Um, all my miles, I think, were under seven minutes, except for, I think, Heartbreak Hill mile was seven flat. Um, and then the crowd, the crowd was pretty crazy. Everybody talks about the crowd. I mean, um, it wasn't as crazy as I thought it was going to be. I'm not going to lie. I think it got a little bit overhyped, but it was still really cool. Um, there's a few spots where I could just feel my hair all stand up during the race, which was really cool. Um, despite how much I was suffering at times, I would see a funny sign or some people doing some funny stuff and I would definitely just kind of get a smirk or a chuckle on my face despite the suffering I was going through. Um, finished the race, I ran 232, 33, something, something right there, right around two, in the 232 range, um, which is technically a PR for me by about a minute, but given the goals and the actual training I put in this, it was definitely a lot slower than I would have liked to have ran. I was hoping to run under 225, which was a realistic goal until kind of the wheels came off those last three weeks. Um, following the race, uh, it's kind of tough. You know, there's thousands and thousands of people there, right? And I, you know, I picked a meeting spot where I was, Fletcher was supposed to meet me after the race and, uh, Man, they got everything gated off. Where I'm sort of trying to go is gated off. And I like, I asked some people and they let me through the gate. And then uh, I get to the spot where we're supposed to meet and Fletcher's not quite there yet. And man, I sit down and that was a mistake. My body just immediately just starts cramping up like crazy. My calves, my quad, and some lady next to me is like, oh, are you okay? You need me to go get some? I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm all right. But I, I was just suffering like no other. Uh, Fletcher uh, came and threw a blanket around me and or sorry I already had like the race day blanket and then Fletcher finally got there and gave me his rain jacket and flannel which was a clutch move because then he was just sitting there in the pouring rain and um, shout out to Fletcher Morgan for being there right after the finish definitely needed that also uh, after that we kind of like walked and Jack I forgot to mention this Jack gave me like my hydration during the race twice and he's cruising around the truck camper through the streets of Boston, picks me up after the race, gets me back to the campground where I'm able to take a hot shower and everything else. Um, so, I mean, that's that's kind of my race day right there. Um, 
given the hand I was dealt, I am I am proud of myself for how I did out there because, man, like I cannot express to you how rough the three weeks were leading up to the race and even just the day before the race. So um, I definitely made it through a lot. And believe it or not, um, running slow, a lot slower than what I would have liked to have and my goals were realized how fast that I can run um, because like to be able to pull off what I did given the hand I was dealt is in my opinion pretty crazy like it was just stall mentality at this point um but anyway moving forward I I definitely already do want to run another marathon that being said I don't feel like running Boston anytime soon I'll definitely those hills out there are unreal ridiculously hard course um out of any course I've ran in my life um anyway Moving forward, I think I'm gonna kind of step away from the marathon until I got plenty of time to run my mar marathons in my 30s. But I want to kind of maybe start looking towards getting back on the track and maybe even the cross country course a little bit, just to have some fun. Um, obviously, we're going around in the back of my head for as long as I can remember. Started running sub four miles, it's always been the dream. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe. Um, do some cross country stuff, just maintain some fitness and get a little more fit and stronger going into the f summer and fall and then uh, start focusing on the mile in the winter and spring. Obviously, this is all life permitting and everything else like that. Um, so those are just kind of my thoughts Some thoughts here after the marathon. I got to give a huge shout out to all of the support I've had during this uh, marathon between all my friends have gone out and runs with me and Fletcher, Fletcher, man. Oh, dude, that man getting on the bike in the rain, getting on the bike in the snow, um, coming and pick me up when it's cold and I need to get somewhere else to go lift or whatever. He's always out there helping me out. Um, we're always having a good time though. I mean, it's fun suffering with somebody else out there and it's cool that he, I work with him. So we're always together able to kind of push each other a little bit because uh, we get ourselves into predicaments that aren't always ideal, but shout out to Fletcher. Um, definitely big shout out to my parents. Uh, they're always, always supportive regardless of circumstances. Same thing with my grandparents. Um, it's really cool having my parents at the meet. I needed them there, especially with the mental state that I was in, um, before and after the race. And they were able to kind of help me out there and hook me up with some fresh drinks and food and everything else like that. Um, obviously I don't want to, there's a lot of other people that were a great supporter. Shout out just Josiah. I know you're watching this. You told me you're a big supporter out there catching, getting all hyped up for every video. Same thing with Joey Eternal, Abe Carter. I don't know. I know there's a lot of other uh, guys out there watching this too. So appreciate the support. And, uh, if I didn't give you a shout out, don't think I don't appreciate your support regardless. And, uh, Stay tuned for whatever life brings next on Life on the Wild Side. So thank you all and uh, keep life on the wild side. All right. Uh, one last thing I almost kind of forgot to mention here. Uh, Jack Diamond, you the man for writing my training. Um, so like I have a very weird background in running. I can't, I don't just fit the typical formula of most runners out there. So uh Jack worked with me through travel, um, everything else, my injuries, all my weird history of running, and we were able to put together a training plan, and I think we did pretty well with just uh, kind of winging it a little bit. It's not like uh, Jack writes a ton of workouts for marathoners or anything like that. It's not like I'm a big-time marathoner anyway, so it was really fun working with him. And figuring all all of that out, all the logistics. Um, I was really glad he was able to come watch the marathon and provide some help out there to me. And uh, I think uh, as long as he's on board moving forward, like Jack's my coach, man. Um, for the sub four journey, and the next marathons, whatever the hell else we're getting ourselves into. Uh, I hope Jack's on board for all that because I did really enjoy having him write my training. Oh uh, man, sometimes I just get like some goofy thing on like one of my workouts, like. How many push-ups can you do in, t in an hour today or something like that? Just something random and fun that just kind of spice things up. And uh, hell yeah, Jack. Yeah, man, dude.
What is? <coughs> what is up, guys? This is Brock here. Uh, today's a big day, so just finished up our job here in Norfolk, Virginia. Busted butt. I'm not lie. I'm destroyed. A little bit nervous for Boston now because I'm absolutely destroyed. But that's besides the point. Um, here we are. Throwing in the GPS right now. Boston, Massachusetts. Directions. Starting point. Bam. There you have it. We're shipping off to Boston right now. Let's go. Well, <clears throat> currently on my journey to Boston right now. Um, just got done with a pretty tough job. I'm pretty beat from that. Trying to relax a little bit here before this big race, but here we are. Drove down this road that said it was closed. Only open to the pub or the local traffic, but still mobbed down her anyway to this reservoir along a whole river the whole time. And sadly, the road is gnarly up here, and I had to throw in free wheel drive. I don't feel comfortable going any further, and just, I don't want to get stuck. And there's no camping up here anyway, sadly. So I was really looking forward to swimming, but did not anticipate all this ice. <laughs> so this is unplanned, but I bought some chicken today and some hummus, and I need, didn't buy any ice because I was like, you know. I'll eat it before it gets warm. But we're in luck on plan, but we're about to grab a chunk of ice down here. The old cooler. Um looks like a good piece right there. These three chunks of ice should be more, more than enough for my needs. So, sorry for the running river here in the background, but just for reference, I always did this in high school for championship season. Did it in college. We're counting Boston as championship season, so here we are. She's freshly shaved most of this leg, and then we got this one trimmed up, ready to go, so I mean, I know a lot of people like might get some weird looks or some hate comments, but uh, not gonna lie, it's just part of the journey, so that's what we're doing. Like the mind knows when you shave your legs, it is time to rock and roll. So that's what we're getting ready to do is rock and roll. What is up? Here we are cruising this morning. Uh, just got done. We just got on the road, stayed in Vermont last night. Pretty fun little state to explore for a little bit. Got up to this sweet reservoir and stuff. But here's the big news. We just entered the state of Massachusetts. We are headed to Boston, baby. About to go pick up my packet here on this fine Saturday. Figured might as well do it, get it done with. And uh, you know, bada bing, bada boom, on to race time. Yeah. Alright guys, we are in the heart of Boston right now. My truck camper sadly does not fit in the designated parking garage for packet pickup. So now I am driving about at most one mile an hour around the city trying to find somewhere to park, which is probably pretty much impossible. So that's what's up right now, just sitting here, not moving. I, if I ever lived in the city, there's no way I would own a car. I would just bike and skateboard everywhere, so yeah. This is Boston, folks. I wish I had a Boston accent, but I ain't got one. You know, I'm pretty sure I could just park my car right now. Get out of it. Go pick up my packet. Get back in my car and still be okay as far as traffic moving. So, I don't know if that theory's right. I wish I could try it, but. <laughs> so, here we are. 
going in the wrong direction. We're currently crossing some sort of river right now. And uh, yeah, looks like I'm gonna have to break out the skateboard here, even though I said I wasn't gonna skateboard for, for Boston, but uh, I ain't walking that far, so <laughs> yeah. So, found a little spot to park here two miles from the expo. So here we are, parked two miles from the expo. Did some sketchy maneuvers, unintentionally get over here. Like I came down this, down this way, and then everything says low clearance, cars only. So I'm like, shit, hopefully I don't catch anything. And I didn't. Then I whipped a Yui right here, thinking that traffic was going this way and this way. But it turns out most traffic's going that way, even down this thing. So, but we made her, so 